Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the True Church of Jesus Christ with His Latter Day Saint, and we are sitting up in the last days according to the Word of our Lord. And uh, I've been extracting a lot of the messages from the YouTube channel You Be Ready, and I got a lot of you could say messages. So if you guys are not going over to the channel and listening, do not worry. I'm preaching mostly all of the messages that I think are pretty important for the coming of the world events. And this is by faith. So this is my faith. When I, and this is what I'm talking about, both hearing the truth. So we'll go to John 16, verse 21. That all may be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you. I pray that they may be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And Oh, sorry. So John 16, verse 13. When he comes, however, being the spirit of truth, he will guide you to know all truth, and he will not speak on his own accord, but he will speak only what he hears and will announce to you the things to come. In doing this, he will give me glory, because he will have received from me what he will announce to you. <laughs> so all of these messages came from uh, the YouTube channel, You Be Ready. And this is what faith means. So Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. All who welcome me and welcome he who welcomes him that sent me, he welcomes a prophet and he bears his name and welcomes the name of a prophet shall bear a prophet's reward. So if you go to the channel and you hear this gentleman and he is receiving the straight word of Jesus Christ. So that's what I believe. This is my faith that that gentleman is getting the straight word from the Lord and I received his word so I received the prophet's reward and what happens now is uh, there's gonna be like you know new ideas floating around and they're gonna work inside your mind so that's another thing too of being absorbed in the word can you let these new words absorb in your mind and I know they're not uh, messages of self-realization Jesus Christ already gave the prophecy in the New Testament and uh, that's the thing that the prophet is saying now that these prophecies will be fulfilled and the judgment day of the Lord is the coming judgment of America so I have uh, three messages from the Lord and uh, there's no I didn't tamper around with the messages at all I'm going to read word for word what the Lord has been given to us through this other gentleman over at the channel. So I'll go with the first message. My son, I've led you to these verses so you can warn my church. Many have shouted the warnings, yet just as in olden times, they will not hear. My church is caught up in the cares of this world. They worship a political man, thinking he'll change everything. They're blind to the fact that I placed him there to bring judgment to America. This nation, with all of its filth and sin, has become an abomination to me. Where's my church? They're sound asleep and fully deceived. I've said many times for my church and my body to repent and prepare for the times of tribulation. But because man has deceived my people, they're not ready for the persecutions that is at the door. Many will perish and come home. Many will fall away because they do not know how to walk in great faith. They will cry out to me for a reprieve, yet I will not hear them. I will bring a mighty nation from the north, an ancient nation whose language you do not know. They will eat all your food, kill all your stock, and ravage the land as do locusts. My children will cry out to me for mercy, yet I will not hear them. My son, judgment has been set for this nation and the reprobates that govern it. I've set aside a special judgment for Mystery Babylon and the horror that rides the beast. You America, you're the Mystery Babylon and the whore is my church. My children, you've been so deceived that you think this nation is the apple of my eye. This nation will stand in judgment as the most evil and vile nation the world has ever known. This nation is governed by evil, wicked men, and so they too will cry out to me, and I will not hear them. 
My son, soon the world will be plunged into war. That is the plan of those who will rule this world. But I, saith the Lord, will stop their plan. I will bring about earthquakes, floods, storms, volcanoes, and tidal waves. I will unleash my fury on them, as not seen before in any time period or in history. My children will cry out to me for mercy, but I will not hear them. I will ask all those who read or hear this word to repent. Straighten yourselves and prepare your hearts for the persecution is coming to America. Only those who are willing to walk in my will will survive. All others will come home. I love you, my children. Be not deceived by those who say things to tickle your ears. Prepare now. Repent now. For now I will hear you. But soon I will not. Amen, Lord Jesus. And uh, we'll get into the next message here. It's called The Bomb. So in this vision, the prophet on the channel there, uh, he was at ground level of large, busy city full of activity. Now I'll speak in the first person. I did not know the location. Suddenly I saw a bright flash and explosion. And there the vision ended. Today the Lord gave me this vision again with greater detail. This time I was taken high up in the air above the land. I still was unaware of the location. As I was looking down on the land below me, I had the view of a large river with a very large city beside the river. This city seemed to be an important central hub, very busy with much activity taking place. As I watched, suddenly a very bright flash appeared and then a ball of fire erupted from the city center. While I was still above, a sign appeared in the sky in front of me and flew right past me. As I went by, I was, I was able to read a name on the sign, and it said, D. Napiro. I was taken away from this scene and was immediately over the center of America. Again, I did not know the location. From above, I could see that all of the land was very flat and appeared to be somewhere in the area of the plains. I did not see any cities, but was able to see several small rural towns below. Then suddenly I saw a very bright flash, bigger than the one I'd just seen. It was a huge fireball, and the small towns instantly disappeared. The vision ended, and the Lord spoke the word and the parable to me. Now the Lord speaks, my son, this is what bullies do. They pick fights and hurt little, weaker people. Hear this parable. There are three bullies on a block, along with a lunatic. The three bullies do nothing but fight and gain control of an area. They fight and take over different blocks, not caring whatever happens to the little people. One day, while the three bullies were marveling at all they control, along comes a lunatic. He is not as big as the bullies, yet he has the fierceness and weapons to do what he wants, and he wants control. My son, the three bullies are the bear, the dragon, and the eagle. So the Russians, the Chinese, and the United States. These three bullies control the majority of the world. However, the lunatic is a child of the dragon and cannot be controlled as he is spoiled child. So this lunatic is North Korea. Keep your eyes on the bullies, however, but really watch the lunatic. For he can cross gross darkness on the land. My son, war is here, and the spirit on the red horse is taking away peace. Shout to my body, wake up, wake up, and wake up. While you sleep, bullies and lunatics move in the darkness. Repent now, and turn from your evil ways and sorceries. Repent now of the witchcraft that is running rampant in my house. Repent now of the unforgiveness and offenses that will take away your will take your names away out of my book. My remnant, the test and trials are to make you stronger in the circumstances or persecutions. I love you all very much and I'll be very with you soon. Look up and I'm coming soon. Amen, Lord Jesus. So we'll go on with the third message here and afterwards some scripture. 
So this uh, message is called the great ball of fire. So the prophet speaks, as soon as he spoke the words to me, I was instantly above the earth, far enough in space to be able to view the entire earth. And it was awesome. Such a sight to behold. And I was able to look upon it with a beautiful planet of ours that seemed to just hang on nothing and suspend there in the blackness of space. I next turned and saw the sun, even though I looked right at it, but it did not hurt my eyes. The Lord was right behind me and slightly to my right when he spoke to me and said he wanted to show me a great fireball that will strike the earth very soon. He said that no one will see it coming, not the scientists or the astronomers. So I asked him, how will they not see it as they have satellites and telescopes in space that are looking for anything that will collide with the earth? I heard him say, look and see. And I was looking at the earth and watching it slowly rotate, I could make out the Atlantic Ocean. I saw the Iberian Peninsula, which is Spain and Portugal, and the African coast as the earth rotated. But the Lord brought my attention to a point in space that was not too far outside the Earth's atmosphere. Then suddenly out of nowhere, there appeared a rip or a tear in the fabric of space that opened up and a bright light appeared. Then the tear closed back up. As soon as it opened, my eyes again focused on the Earth and I saw a giant black brownish rock tumbling and being propelled toward the earth at high speeds. This rock had come out of the tear that had just opened in space. One minute, nothing, just peaceful, quiet, calm, serene earth. Then the next minute, a giant rock appeared out of nowhere. As this rock entered the atmosphere, I saw it begin to heat up and start to burn from the friction. I was so aghast by what I saw I was, and I was shocked and awed, not knowing that it would hit the earth or burn up at this time. While this was taking place, I was able to see, and it was dark, on the east coast, but I did not know what time it was actually. So the Lord spoke to me and said this, That which had been foretold from the beginning of time, I have a day and a time chosen, and my prophets have warned about it, I continued watching it as it burned hotter and hotter and then I struck and then it struck the ocean. It looked like a hundred nuclear explosions. And in one the whole earth shook and trembled violently with the force of the impact. It was so great that the plume of steam of water and fire reached far, far into the atmosphere. While the earth on the earth, the place where it struck looked like a boiling lake of massive lava. From where I still, for where it's still from outer space above the earth, where it appeared to have struck in the ocean. That was very difficult. <laughs> that that sounds like a whole bunch of jumbling there. Let me see if I can go to a, a better spot. So basically, this big giant rock comes out of nowhere, and he's describing it how it crash lands with the earth, basically, and it just made a huge disaster. So it's just, it, it caused so much disaster here. Let me see if I could get into the Lord. So that's all, all it basically describes is how there was just a complete disaster. And uh, that scripture there, that mighty rock that came out of nowhere and is being propelled on the earth is in the forgotten books of Adam and Eve. So chapter 48, this is where the scripture is behind that prophecy that the Lord is giving us. So the prophet was given a vision where he was above the earth and a rock materialized out of nowhere. And that rock is the, hand, the invisible rock of Daniel. So remember the invisible stone carved out of nothing and was going to be smashed on the kingdoms of man to destroy that statue. That's basically the see the prophecy the the, st the stone since the beginning of time. This is what's going to come upon us, and uh, this is all in scripture as well too. So whatever 
Jesus Christ told this individual on the channel there, that gentleman there, it's also in scriptures as well. So that's the prophecy of Daniel, the invisible stone carved with no hands is going to come upon this earth. It's going to crash land on this earth. And here it is as well, too, in the Forgotten Books of Adam and Eve. So this is chapter 48. After this, Satan called to his hosts, all of which came to him, and said to him, O Lord, what wilt thou do? Then he said unto them, Ye know that this Adam, who God created out of the dust, is he who has taken us out of our kingdom. Come, let us gather together and kill him, or hurl a rock at him and Eve and crush them under it. So this rock coming out of nowhere, you can see, is the plan of darkness. That's exactly the uh, prophecy that's going to be fulfilled. It already happened, as the Master said, since the beginning of time. And that's why in scriptures there, this rock was also hurled at Adam and Eve as well. So verse 4, when Satan's host heard these words, they came to a part of the mountain where Adam and Eve were asleep. Then Satan with his host took a huge rock, broad and even, and without blemish, thinking within himself, if there should be a hole in the rock, when it fell on them, the hole in the rock might come upon them so that they would escape and not die. <laughs> so basically he wanted the a really good rock with no blemishes or nothing. So he thinks that even if there's a small little hole, it might make them escape. Then he said to his hosts, take this stone and throw it flat upon them so that it roll not from them to somewhere else. And when ye have hurled it, flee and tarry not. And they did as he bid them. But as the rock fell down from the mountain upon Adam and Eve, God commanded it to become, to become a kind of shed over them, so like a roof, that did them no harm. And so it was by God's order. So these prophecies, again, are fulfilling themselves in this time and space. But when the rock fell, the whole earth quaked. See, that's why the prophet, when he's seen this rock out of nowhere in his vision, come on the earth and he's seen the whole earth quaked. That's exactly what it did. But God will shield us by faith. That's what this event is. That's why if you have faith in God, then he will protect you from all of these things that's going to happen to humanity. So the, God made a shield from that rock that was going to fall upon them. But they knew not what it was. Adam and Eve didn't know what they was, for they fell asleep and they were under the sky and not under a rock. And when they saw it, they were afraid. Then Adam said to Eve, Wherefore has this mountain bent itself and the earth quaked and shaken on us on our account? And why has this rock spread over itself over like us a tent? Does God intend to plague us and to shut us up in this prison? Or will he close the earth upon us? Is he angry with us? for having come out of the cave without his order, and for our having done so of our own accord, without consulting him, when we left the cave and came to this place. So verse 13, Then Eve said, If indeed the earth quaked for our sake, and this rock forms a tent over us because of our transgression, all then will be to us, O Adam, for our punishment will be long. But rise and pray, so that's the thing too. Even Adam and Eve knew that they had to pray for God to let us know about concerning this rock and why it's like that over us. Then Adam stood up and prayed before the Lord to let him know about this trial. And thus Adam stood praying until the morning. So that's another thing too with our lives. When we're, that's the idea. When we're confronted with anything in this life, we have to go by it by the routes of prayer now. So that's why these stories, too, opened up my eyes. If there's any problems, Adam and Eve were placed with this problem of a rock being hurled at them, just like we are going to be faced with this problem. I know these might sound utterly fantastic, but this is the faith that we, at least I have. I receive the prophet's reward, and this is working in my head. So when I wake up every day, yeah, life is difficult, and especially difficult when you have to 
hear these messages as well. So the three days of darkness. This is all about the people in the world, the worldlings, who aren't too familiar with these three days of darkness. They're just brought up with terms. So what is the three days of darkness? Well, it's already in Scripture. That's chapter 49 of the book 1 and 2 of Adam and Eve. So verse 6, And it came from Satan, who had promised thee the Godhead and majesty. So God's explaining to him how they came from this rock. It is he who threw it down to try to kill you, you and Eve, and thus to prevent you from living upon the earth. But in my mercy for you, just as the rock was falling upon you, I commanded it from an awning over you and the rock under you to lower itself. And this is a sign, O oh Adam, that will happen to me at my coming upon the earth. So this is basically the second coming of Christ as well that's in the scriptures. That's why this might seem so fantastic. But this was already in the scriptures. So he's giving the prophet not any anything new. Jesus Christ is not speaking to the gentleman over at the U. Be ready channel, anything new. It's giving him prophecy of what is going to happen because this is already in scripture. So the thing he's telling him that when uh, this thing comes upon me on earth, Satan will raise the people of the Jews and put me to death and they will lay me in a rock. So that's the thing too that the Christ had to go through is being in that cave and seal a large stone on me, and I shall remain within the rock three days and three nights. But on the third day I shall rise again, and it shall be salvation to you, Adam, because that's when he has to descend into hell and save Adam from what the transgression was since the beginning. But this rock, just like the Christ had to go through the rock, this rock is going to come upon humanity, according to the prophet. And God withdrew his word from Adam. But Adam and Eve abode under the rock three days and three nights. So Adam and Eve still had to live under this rock three days and three nights, as God told them. And God sit, did so to them because they had left their cave and had come to this place without God's order. But after three days and three nights, God opened the rock and brought them out from under it. Their flesh was dried up and their eyes and their hearts were troubled from weeping and sorrow. So again, that's the prophecy that this gentleman is receiving, but he's not receiving just prophecy. These are all the scriptures, and the scriptures have to be fulfilled as well. So I guess I'll cut it quits right there. There's a lot of messages, and I'll try to get as much of them done today as much as possible. <laughs> so uh, thank you guys for tuning in, and until next time, take care.